Hello and welcome to another episode here on CapTech. Today we're going to talk about United States presidents that history has forgotten, an epic adventure through American history. Let's dive in. Not a single United States president that is on this uh, picture here uh, will be featured in this video today. Um, for those of you that might um, might have thought that I was um, talking about Gerald Ford not uh, not actually being elected, um, but ascending to the presidency through the 25th Amendment, that is not where this is headed. Um, so let's uh, dive into the details a little further. So prior to the Constitution, there were the Articles of Confederation. Um, it did not have a federal government, executive, or judicial branches, um, but there was a president of the Constitutional Congress. Um, so schools in the U.S. teach children from an early age that the first president was George Washington. But teachers often forget to mention a small detail. Um, you know, he was... Uh, the first president under the Constitution, but he really wasn't our first president per se. So um, when the Articles of Confederation went into effect in 1781, uh, they established a loose alliance among the states. Um, they appointed, they uh, defined the role of Congress rather uh, to oversee national needs uh, as well as the office of the president. Uh, they did fear about giving. They did have fears about giving too much power to one person, um, so the power was very limited. It was not even a paid position. Uh, the primary role of the president at this time to, was to simply to simp, uh, preside over meetings, handle various state correspondence, etc. Um, the president was also the one who signed uh, official congressional documents. So the first president of the United States under the Articles of Confederation uh, was John Hanson from Maryland. His term began in 1781 and ended in 1782. He tried to resign, um, being the first con uh, being the country's first full-term president under the Ar Articles of Confe Confederation meant he oversaw programs that help establish daily life in our new country. Uh, for instance, he uh, held the president the office of uh, president when our government uh, started on the road to creating what uh, is the uh, U.S. Post Office and the National Bank. Uh, the government also established a single uniform currency under his uh, otherwise powerless watch. Uh, interesting tidbit. Uh, his grandfather paid his way to America from England by being an indentured servant. Um, but uh, by Hanson's time, the family had rose to be quite rich, um, allowing Hanson to help fund the revolution, um, both through fundraising and often just paying soldiers out of his own pocket. Uh, next, we have Elias Boudinot of New Jersey. Um, I'm sure I'm butchering horribly the name. Um, his presidency coincided with the end of the Revolutionary War. Uh, he presided over the country, uh, our country when uh, the Treaty of Paris was signed. Um, the Treaty of Paris did more than simply end the war. It required that the U.S. Uh, be recognized as an independent country. So this guy was, um, you know, around for some pretty important things for not being a name that at least I can pronounce. Next, we have Thomas Mifflin, uh, Mifflin rather. The most interesting thing I could find out about this president um, was that uh, uh, he accepted uh, George Washington's resignation as commander in chief, um, you know, when he was uh, serving as president. So I thought that was an interesting little twist to history. Next, we have Richard Henry Lee of Virginia. Um, it seems like his uh, the presidency was quite uh, uneventful, um, but that uh, an interesting twist to history did kind of occur around this guy because uh, General, General Robert E. Lee, um, you know, was his uh, descendant later on uh, when, when we'd have our Civil War. Um, it also says um, that he became a vocal opponent of the now current U.S. Constitution out of the fear that it uh, would create a central government too similar to the government um, that the colonies lived under, under Brit you know, as British citizens. Um, so those are the interesting tidbits on uh, 
Henry Lee, or I'm sorry, Richard Henry Lee. Okay, John Hancock, not forgotten by history, um, but forgotten as a president by history. I mean, certainly a, a founding father, um, but um, uh, not only did he have a large signature, he was president, but he was president under the Declaration of Independence, not under the U.S. Constitution. Next, we have Nathaniel Gorham. Interesting that um, uh, his, uh, his family, uh, his sister was the wife of John Layton, an ancestor of um, the second wife of Theodore Roosevelt. So you're still seeing um, basically the same group of, uh, you know, powerful families, uh, uh, you know, in charge of the country that we saw, you know, we, we continue to see that trend today. I thought that was interesting. Not much else interesting about Nathaniel Gorham, though. The seventh president was a man named from was a man from Ohio named Arthur St. Clair. Uh, left Congress after finishing his term. He then received appointment to the governor of the Northwest Territory. Um, despite once being enormously wealthy, Claire, uh, St. Clair ultimately died poor, uh, with much of his wealth used to support the American Revolution. So that's interesting. Next, Cyrus Griffin of Virginia, had a background in law, what's changed there? Um, he put the uh, country's new ju uh, judicial system on a path to becoming what's uh, now known as the American court system. So he had a uh, significant contribution to our history despite uh, the fact that not a lot of us have uh, heard of the man. So it's all about where you wanna draw the line, right? There were also presidents uh, before uh, the Articles of Confederation were uh, uh, ratified, uh, Peyton Randolph, uh, Henry Middleton, um, John uh, Hancock, who served uh, two years earlier. Um, so it's um, it's worth uh, worth noting that um, uh, it's all about where you wanted to decide. Um, you know, historically speaking, what you would count as a U.S. president and what you wouldn't. Um, but um, if we did want to peel that line a little further back, we probably wouldn't have uh, quite as an iconic, uh, you know, founding father as our first president. Um, but maybe we'd have a more accurate history, or at least that is debatable. Next. Uh, we slide uh, into the 1860s um, and look at Jefferson Davis, who served as presidency of uh, the uh, Confederate States of America during the uh, Civil War uh, from um, uh, 1861 to 1865. I thought it was interesting to note that he was also um, for the North, you know, before the Civil War, um, served as U.S. Secretary of War from 1853 to 1857 under Franklin Pierce. Um, so that uh, uh, meets the definition of a uh, president on American soil that we don't uh, count in our tally. And depending exactly on where we do want to draw the line, we also have Sanford Dole, um, a relative of the uh, guy that started the uh, Dole Food Company. Um, and he was president of the Republic of Hawaii um, before it uh, joined the uh, Union officially. Um, so I thought that was uh, interesting as well. So that's the end of this uh, feature on the uh, Forgotten Presidents. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Um, love to uh, have you comment on our video as well. Thank you.